Five people were taken into FBI custody on Sunday night in connection with Saturday's explosion in Manhattan's Chelsea neighborhood. According to ABC News, the FBI's New York field office conducted a traffic stop of a vehicle of interest in the investigation. As many as five people were taken in custody, but no one has been charged with any crime and the investigation is continuing. This comes a day after a bomb exploded in the Manhattan neighborhood of Chelsea in New York City on Saturday, injuring 29 people. The incident in New York was one of three different acts of terror that rocked the country in a single day and came less than a week after the U.S. observed the 15th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. Authorities in Minnesota are calling a mall stabbing spree there a potential act of terrorism. Tonight, the FBI confirming it is investigating if the man who went on a stabbing rampage in a Minnesota mall had ties to terrorism. We are currently uh, investigating this as a potential act of terrorism. Today, ISIS is claiming to have inspired the attack, releasing a statement calling the man a soldier of the Islamic State who acted in response to calls to target citizens. Authorities say the attacker made references to Allah during the five minutes of terror he brought to this mall. There was at least one victim who was asked if they were Muslim. Police saying the knife-wielding attacker wearing a security guard's uniform stabbed nine people before being brought down by an off-duty police officer. The police now scouring mall security video. Well, you saw him lunge at the police officer. Uh, the officer then uh, fired uh, a round, a few rounds. Uh, you see him fall and then you see him get back up. Police say the attacker got up three times before the fatal shot. The officer, Jason Falconer, being called a hero. For all New Yorkers, a central message we want to give today is be vigilant. Be vigilant because the police need your help. And if you see anything that might be pertinent to this case, we need you to call it in. And you should know you will see a very substantial NYPD presence this week bigger than ever. We would normally have an expanded presence for the United Nations General Assembly. You will see an even stronger presence now. As the investigation and media attention goes on around them, New Yorkers who've endured the September 11th attacks and the devastating superstorm of 2012 appear to be generally unperturbed by the blast in Manhattan. For most, it's a matter of putting things into perspective. We will live in the same area. Uh, since 9-11 and I think we've all been through we were through 9-11 and that was uh, weeks and weeks and weeks of uh, clean up messes and odors and disruptions and um, I think people are relieved that this is uh, nowhere close to that at all. I don't let it get to me because that's what these perpetrators want so just have to stay calm and uh, very I hope nobody um, was more than just injured. That's it. Just have to go on with life. No concern. These things happen very rarely, um, and it seems like they're on top of it, so there's nothing to worry about. In light of recent bombs having been discovered in garbage receptacles in New York and New Jersey, Los Angeles Police Department Chief Charlie Beck has issued a warning to Emmy goers and Rams. We ask everyone to stay vigilant and remember. If you see something, say something, he said in a statement issued on Sunday, urging citizens to download the iWatch LA app. The Arch of Triumph is going up in New York City on September 19. Do you remember all of the buzz about the arch from the Temple of Baal that was supposed to go up in Times Square back in April? Well, that project was ultimately canceled, but now it has been resurrected in a new form. In April a reproduction of a different arch, the Arch of Triumph, was erected in Trafalgar Square in London, and now another reproduction of that famous arch will be going up in New York City on September 19. This particular arch is not the same when that once stood directly in front of the Temple of Baal in Syria. Rather, the Arch of Triumph was constructed at a later date by the Romans, and it served to link the main street of the colonnade with the temple. So there is still definitely a connection with the Temple of Baal. Now, Syrian army says that it's opened fire at an American Air Force reconnaissance plane flying over the eastern part of the country. Now, there are no more details about the fate of the aircraft that was hovering over a military installation in Deir Ezzor. The province on Saturday was a scene of a U.S. air raids against the Syrian army that killed at least 83 soldiers. 
Meanwhile, the Syrian army says that its forces have launched an offensive against Daesh positions in Deir Ezzor. The terrorist group has been under heavy bombardment over the past 24 hours. The Daesh claims that it shot down a Syrian fighter jet in the same area. It also says the pilot of the jet died in that incident. Tens of Syrian families evacuated rebel-held areas in the northern city of Aleppo on Sunday. The families left the rebel-held areas in eastern part of the city. They crossed into the government-controlled parts through South Houdin neighborhood. It's a crossing between rebel-held areas in the east and government-controlled ones in the west. The evacuation came as part of a renewed call by the government on the civilians in the rebel-held areas to leave and return to the government-controlled areas. On July the 30th, a few Syrian families left rebel-held areas as part of the government offer to guarantee them a good life out of the besieged rebel-held areas. However, the rebels unleashed a wide-scale offensive and briefly broke the government's siege on eastern Aleppo. That prompted the Syrian government to launch a major offensive. The Iranian president has warned Asian countries against allowing regional tensions to pave the way for the presence and intervention of superpowers. Hassan Rouhani made the remark in his meeting with North Korea's nominal head of state, Kim Jong-un, no, pardon me, Kim Jong-nam. During the meeting, Rouhani stressed the need for a collective prudence and a political solution to differences to maintain stability and security throughout East Asia. Remarks come amid heightened tensions in the Korean Peninsula following Pyongyang's nuclear test and the U.S. reaction to send nuclear bombers to South Korea in a show of force earlier this month. The meeting between Rouhani and Nam came on the sidelines of the summit of the non-aligned movement in Venezuela. During the 17th NAM summit, Rouhani handed over the movement's presidency to his Venezuelan counterpart, Nicolas Maduro. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro says that he is waging an economic war to topple his government. Maduro made a comment in an address to a two-day summit of the non-aligned movement leaders in Venezuela. Maduro described the U.S. economic war as an onslaught that is waged on all Latin American and Caribbean nations. He said Washington is trying to recolonize the region politically, economically, and culturally. Cuba's President Raul Castro also echoed Maduro, saying the U.S. is hatching subversive and meddling plots against regional countries. Now members of the non-aligned movement have called for a reform of the United Nations, demanding more influence for developing countries in the world body. In a statement at the end of the group's 17th summit, member nations called for inclusion of more states in the UN Security Council. Participants in the meeting, which was held on Venezuela's Margarita Island, also demanded the UN place more value on the sovereignty of emerging powers. A world leaders gathering in New York on Monday for a UN summit on tackling the refugee and migrant crisis is the first of its kind during the UN General Assembly. It comes amid a record number of displaced people. According to figures provided by UN agencies, 65.3 million people have been driven from their homes by the end of 2015 due to conflicts and persecution. On average, 24 people were forced to flee every minute last year. More than half of the refugees come from just three nations, Syria, Afghanistan and Somalia. Nearly one in 200 children in the world is a refugee. A senior Palestinian official expresses hope that China would play a greater role in the Middle East. Abbas Zaki, Fatah Party Commissioner for Relations with Arab countries and China, says that China has never participated in political games against the Palestinians. We hope for China to take a larger role in international decision making because that means that we will be safe because China is a strategic ally whenever we need. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and U.S. President Barack Obama will meet on Wednesday, according to U.S. government officials. The meeting will most likely take place at the hotel where Obama will be staying in New York. The Israeli military has deployed additional soldiers to the occupied West Bank, hundreds of them in Al Khalil, also known as Hebron, in a new effort to prevent anti Israeli actions by intimidating Palestinians. Earlier, Israel placed the village of Bani Naim near Al Khalil under a full military blockade, preventing Palestinians from entering or exiting the village. Israeli forces delivered interrogation notices to several Palestinians. 
Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu during the weekly cabinet meeting said both the Israeli military and police would be on heightened alert during the Jewish holidays. America's opioid epidemic has been rapidly increased to crisis levels over the course of the last decade. However, pharmaceutical companies like Purdue, which makes OxyContin and Pfizer, the second largest drug company in the world, have employed over 1,300 lobbyists and spent over $880 million in the last nine years to prevent states from enacting laws that would limit access to painkillers. A study published in 2013 found that four in five new heroin users got there by misusing opioid painkillers. However, this money and lobbyists have been able to add to our growing problem with influence on our officials. Hundreds of thousands of people across Germany are protesting international trade deals they believe will have adverse effects on the country as a whole. Negotiations for the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, or TTIP, started in 2013, but even then the deal wasn't really met with much enthusiasm. Demonstrators took over the streets in major cities like Berlin, Munich, and Hamburg. Many Germans worried the deal will affect the country's strict environmental protection laws and lower the quality standards on imported goods. The goal of the partnership is to cut tariffs and barriers on imports and exports. The deal would also create the largest free market in the world, with around 850 million consumers. Despite German Chancellor Angela Merkel's backing of the deal, many Germans, including Vice Chancellor Sigmar Gabriel, are still opposed. Major concern is that the partnership could lead to more outsourcing and the loss of jobs. Chancellor Angela Merkel's conservatives suffered their second electoral blow in two weeks on Sunday, with support for her Christian Democrats, CDU, plunging to a post-reunification low in a Berlin state vote due to unease with her migrant policy. The anti-immigrant alternative for Germany, AFD, polled at 11.5 percent, gaining from a popular backlash over Merkel's decision a year ago to keep borders open for refugees. In contrast to scenes last September when hundreds of thousands of migrants crossed Hungary on the way to Western Europe, Hungary's border with Serbia is relatively calm these days. The razor wire fence erected by the country has made quite a difference. Hungary allows 30 people per day into two transit zones. There they can submit an asylum request. If caught within 8 kilometers, anyone who breaches the border is escorted back through the gates in the fence. For exactly 1 minute and 30 seconds. At the twilight's last gleaming. The national anthem played at this Friday night football game in Seattle. And the Garfield High School Bulldogs took a stand by refusing to stand during a song they all know by heart. Or the ramparts we watched. The purple clad players kneeling together in single file behind Garfield's coaching staff and at the very front of the line, head coach Joey Thomas. This came from them. This came from the kids. Now, don't get me wrong, I supported 110% and that's where my mind and heart was, but this is what they wanted and I think that's what makes this so special. Thomas spoke to us on behalf of the kids on his team about their decision to join in on the national anthem protest that began in the NFL and seek to draw attention to racial injustice in this country. But this isn't about disrespecting our troops. We love our troops. It's because of our troops that we can exercise this right. The right to stand up for what they believe in, or in this case, to take a knee. Brave. And Black Lives Matter now facing some serious consequences for messages like this one. <laughs> Well, the Black Lives Matter is now being sued by a black Dallas police officer. Sergeant uh, Demetric Penny claims Black Lives Matter and their supporters have incited a, quote, uh, race war and violence against police. Al Sharpton, George Soros, President Obama and Hillary Clinton all named in that lawsuit. Well, five Dallas officers were killed during an ambush at the end of a Black Lives Matter protest back in July. Fuel supplies in at least five states are threatened by a gas pipeline spill in Alabama. Tony DeCopel has this story. When it's working, the Colonial Pipeline Company's Line 1 carries fuel from Houston to New York, filling the gas tanks of millions of people. And when it's not working, this is what happens. Long lines, mammoth price spikes, and even dry pumps in parts of Georgia and Tennessee. It's all because of a massive fuel spill in central Alabama. At least a quarter billion gallons of gas erupted from an underground pipe. 
It's been shut down since the spill was discovered September 9th. And now six southern states are under emergency orders, allowing fuel trucks to work longer hours in hopes of averting a crisis. We have a pipeline burst, and there's a shortage, so I'm trying to fill up. Hit like three gas stations up and all of them empty. Station down the street didn't have any gas. Patrick DeHaan is a senior petroleum analyst at Gas Buddy. He says the South should brace for 20 to 40 cent price bumps per gallon. I don't think we've seen such a large disruption to fuel supply since Hurricane Katrina back in 2005. We've had great water. But Heidi Strickland says something's changed since the sinkhole formed a few weeks ago. It's just that rotten egg kind of smell, like if you overcooked your eggs on the stove. She isn't 100% sure it's due to the mosaic incident, but the foul odor makes her very nervous. I'm not a scientist. I don't know. It seems like the two are going hand in hand, and it's kind of scary. Across the street. They still assure us it's safe, but we're still unsure. Mulberry resident Beth Sprague is also taking precautions. In fact, she never trusted the water, so she bought this filtration system. So how much did you pay for this? Around $10,000. 10000 So 10, basically in that way you can bathe and cook with the mm -hmm, water. Correct. But you still don't drink it. We don't. But with news of leaking toxic water, she's going a step further by requesting a free water quality test for Mosaic. I would trust them. Um, they want to do what's right as well. So... Um, I wouldn't have any concerns. But Strickland is skeptical of Mosaic's testing. How can we trust them to be the ones to test our water? She's going to have an independent company test her H2O. But Mosaic reps saying this weekend that there is no immediate danger to surrounding properties. And currently there are pipes sucking contaminated water out of the aquifer. Residents are hoping for a quick resolution. We just want everybody to be safe and um, right. just do the best thing for us. It's very scary. You know, when my grandchildren come to my house all the time, I want them to have a safe environment there. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. As 111-year-old Hester Ford recited the 23rd Psalm, I sat in a chair in awe. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. For most of our interview, she wasn't too talkative. She had trouble hearing me. During one of her answers, she got confused. She has dementia. Time has taken its toll on Mrs. Ford. But then her family asked her to recite her favorite verse from the Bible. Yeah, do I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. As she stared straight into the camera, she recited every one of the 117 words without flaw. That video was posted to Facebook and people noticed. More than 43,000 people shared it. Almost 2 million people watched it. Thou repair a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Time can take a lot of things as a person grows older, but for Mrs. Ford, the one thing 111 years left unscathed is her faith. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.